So uh, last week I had a chance to uh, moderate a panel for the American Advertising Federation. It was all about connecting with consumers in new ways and how you use alternative brand marketing. And it was a great conversation. It was a lot of fun. And we actually streamed it live and we were getting great comments as we went. Different people commented on Twitter um, as we were doing it so we were able to ask some of those questions. We didn't get a chance to ask all of them but we asked a lot of them. And, and what I realized was that so many people that were at the event did not get a chance to see it because they had other functions going on. In particular, there were like, um, I think, 300 uh, uh, college students that were there that all wanted to see this particular panel, and for good reason, because you had on there the guy who runs all the marketing for um, uh, DirecTV. You had the guy who runs all the marketing for, for Wrigley. You had a guy who started a business at the age of 26, and now they are the largest buyers of celebrity uh, and music talent in the world. I mean, you had some people with some juice on here, and certainly could have given some, some great insight if they were able to watch it. So I'm happy that we taped it. So the actual, um, uh, you can click right in the bottom and you can see the full thing. It's about uh, 50 minutes, but it's well worth it. Great responses. And in particular, we're going to kick it off and lead it with the last response that they gave. Because the last questions that I asked them was, hey, you know, um, you guys have all reached pretty significant levels within your marketing career. You've done so at a young age. What advice would you have? Um, if those college students were able to be here, what advice would you have? But it's not only for the college students, it's advice for us because these guys have done it, they've got the juice, and as we know, success leaves clues. So I hope that you uh, enjoy it. Can you share um, you know, any life lessons, any professional lessons? You know, what's been most important to you and your success that you could share with us? Brian? Okay, this well, we'll kind of go quick down the road. Uh, I would just say as a, as a business owner that to me it was just about finding a great idea and finding a niche that no one else was in and kind of you know, developing it and not try to be everything to everybody. Um, I'm a firm believer of do one or two things and, and be the best at it than be pretty good at ten things. I think nowadays uh, different agencies and um, different whether it's PR or ad or experiential try to be everything to the client and I think you know, for a while that was working and, uh, you know, hey, we're going to sell in that we can do everything. I think it's gone back to, at least from my point of view, what I see the marketers want and the corporations want is specialty service. They want experts. And if you can find that point of differentiation and make yourself an expert in the space and not really stray too far outside those lines, I think you're going to be successful if you come up with a business model. So that's what we try to do every day. And you know, believe it or not, we turn down a lot of business because it's not in our wheelhouse and we don't think we're the best at it. And we're happy to send our client in a different direction to say, this is a group that we've worked with before with another client. They're the best at this. Uh, go to them. And I think it's won us a lot of points over the years. Great. Uh, I would say to surround yourself with people that are experts at things that you can't do um, and that have the confidence to uh, agree with you but tell you when you're full of crap, you know, when you've got a bad idea. Because if you don't have people that have the confidence to be honest with you and push back, um, you know you're you're going to have a you're going to have a tough time the 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 worst thing to have is a is a team that just sit there and tells you what they think you want to hear so um you know you can uh i'm just a talking head i have fantastic people working for me and and they're the ones that come up with all these great ideas and execute them and i i would say there there's an old saying uh do what you love and the money will come and i think that Kind of the essence of that is, is that if you like what you're doing and you have passion for what you're doing, generally you end up being pretty good at it and you, you can excel in it. And for any person who's making a choice about what career path they're going to have or what they want to do with their life, if you're not doing what you want to do and you're not really loving what you're doing, you're kind of you know, wasting your time. So I think it comes down to and in, in, in this has been my experience uh, with everyone that I've worked with uh, who's been a boss of mine has been someone who the, the folks have been most impactful on me are the ones who really love what they were doing. And they, in that love transpired into they were talented, they were smart, they were strategic, and they were able to make an impact on the business and also the people that, they, that work for them. And I, would, and I think that's the truth of it. I love what I do. I think that makes going to work fun, 
and because it's fun to go to work every day, it, I don't really mind. You know, it, it, the money is completely secondary. So just make a choice to do what you like to do. And if you don't like what you're doing, uh, it's not really fun to go to work every day. And it's going to be work. It's not going to be a career.